We are the three black crack grads. I am Mark Skinner. I'm here with Ken Nelson and Greg Cleghorn. And this week we are talking about, I should say today rather than this week, but today we are talking about too black, too strong, too black, too strong. <laughs> now, before you get all excited and you think we're going to be talking about Public Enemy, we're not, but it's a great song. I so highly suggest that you go get Public Enemy downloads, just pay for them, or you see them on YouTube and then pay for them. They're great, great, great musicians. But that's not what this is about. This is about photographs where the idea of darkness in a photograph uh, uh, is, is part of the character of the photograph. And it's either going to be the uh, image is dark or trying to illuminate a subject that's dark and a dark background. Now, I originally had a photograph that I'd shown before. It was uh, shoes that were black and they had a blue gel on them and you could see that they were really black shoes and a black background. But then I changed to this image that, that Ken's gonna post for us. And uh, I, was, I, I was watching, believe it or not, in the middle of the night, so you know exactly when we taped this, the middle of the night, I get up, I'm on the East Coast of New York, and my wife and I, we get up and we go downstairs and we, we decide we're gonna get something to eat. And we, turn on the TV and we see the beginning of the Olympics and we wind up watching the J J Japan Olympic opening. And we felt like we were the only ones watching it because the stadium was empty. And I thought about in terms of photography and the fact that Japan's having a hard time, I kind of feel sorry for them. You know, Fujifilm was just told that they can't, uh, they can't sell film in the U S anymore uh, for environmental reasons. And that was, uh, uh, you know, a big blow to the Japanese manufacturing. And Nikon's having so much trouble, they said they're going to manufacture all their cameras outside of Japan now. And, and, and I felt bad for them because these companies, as much as I love Hasselblad and as much as other people like other brands, and I'm sure Ken will tell you what he likes and Greg will tell you what he likes, I did a lot of my work on Nikon, so I felt like I owe them just at least this much. And that is to say, one of the things that was probably killing their business up to the point that it's at now was that they were associated with professionalism so much. I think a lot of people were intimidated. And therefore, the cameras for a long time were all black. They were too black. And their feature set was too good and too strong. And people were just intimidated. And I think Toronto had a similar problem. And, and that's probably why everyone's excited about that that that. Z, that Z, as we appear from Europe, the ZFC camera. It comes in chrome and it's retro uh, and it seems a little bit more accessible uh, emotionally, in some cases, economically. But the main thing I wanted to say was you know, Nikon makes really good cameras. Uh, we don't really do a lot of technical stuff, but most of the work I did uh, was done on Nikon. I never mentioned them, I just figured I'd do this. And, uh, you know, I'm going to watch the Olympics and support the USA. And I thought it was really cool that, that Japan actually used Naomi Osaka to light the the Olympic torch. So that, you know, it's a it's pretty cool. In any event, that's my too black, too strong. You'll see that the, you know, the camera's black, background's black. And I just wanted to give them props, at least for once. And that's it. And who's next? Is it Greg? I'll take it from here. Homage to Nikon, good stuff. Uh, I've always liked that. Uh, oh, Nikon. Nikon. Nikon, Nikon. Yeah, that's the that's the question. <laughs> okay, well, um, too black, too strong. When I within when I think about black and too strong, I think of first first of uh, espresso because I'm a coffee guy. But photographically, I think of Ansel Adams. Homage to Ansel and his own system, and where he would try to capture as much of the gray tonal range as possible, except for in his color work. And when he would punch, get a nice rich black, there's just something about black and white film, and you get a nice rich black. But I didn't shoot black and white. Well, I did, but um, and I shot some color ones, and what I really like is the quality that you get in color when you get a nice, chunky, crisp, bulletproof, as we used to say, black in color. So if you could pop on the first image. And um, I like, I like kind of, uh, this is this is saturated, super saturated, so I've got a really unusual sky 
and I get, uh, I always, this picture always makes me think of the somnambulism and uh, just dream state, dream qualities. And um, I really punched the, uh, the black in the, the, uh, in the subject and uh, the spheres came out as they did, you know, and I, I really wanted zero tonality other than the, the high contrast and the high silhouette. Silhouettes in color for me are a lot of fun because it changes the whole uh, um, dynamic for me. It changes the dynamic, it changes the view, it changes the way I'm perceiving it. And I've, I'm a blue guy, I love blue, as you can tell. And uh, I just, I really enjoy that. You can go to the next one. The same thing here um, is this is a, you recognize this as the delicate arch, which is not delicate very, very at all. I think it was actually man-made, but that's my opinion. I, I, I have some uh, extenuating circumstances that I'll, I'll expound on my new, my next website that I'm in the process of building. But again, you know, uh, exposing just a hint, a glint of the sun, but um, not enough of it for it to dominate the image. And uh, then closing the lens down so that I can, um, you know, get a nice rich black silhouette, and uh, I just get a kick out of it. You know, it may, some people are like, "Oh, you know, where's the detail in the uh, la, la, la. Ah, silhouettes are fine. <laughs> <laughs> Keep shooting, and uh, you know, experiment, explore. I I just love shooting, and I have a passion for it. And uh, too black, too strong. Hey, espresso." With no sugar, that's that's black and strong. That's how I like it. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for the topic. Okay, cool. All right, so I'll take it from there. And what I sort of uh, allude to in my images uh, in too black, too strong, is abstraction. And for the most part, anything that is that deep in terms of darkness is going to tend to lean to abstraction. And so I dug in the crates, say in the old days of DJing, but I dug in the crates and pulled out a couple of images. And uh, this is one of them. And I, uh, you may have seen this from me before, but uh, I don't think I've shown it a lot. Uh, I just, you know, it's just so interesting. And of course, anyone who travels in New York City subways probably knows where this is. If you've traveled in Midtown, you know where this is. Um, for these, so okay. It looks like it looks like the crown of the Statue of Liberty casting mm. a shadow. Okay. Cool. Yeah, they have the, those window panes in the crown. Cool. I'm just saying for yeah, abstractions. No. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, it's it, with the sense of abstraction, the the connection to reality is going to be loose. Therefore, the ability to for each viewer is going to be actually different than a regular photograph because the abstraction is going to divest from reality for everyone, uh, depending on where you are. You may, you may strive to find it or you just may go with it and not care about where, what's real and what's not when you look at something like that. Uh, again, because as you know, uh, when a photograph, when most photographs are taken, the eye usually travels to the source of light and not the source of dark. So therefore, when you have a mostly dark photograph, you tend to get confused as to where you're gonna go. And uh, this tonality on the light is not bright, bright, but it's bright enough to be the, the main source of light uh, that is gonna make the eye. So that's for that one. And the second image is... Uh, wait, wait, so where was it? I, I don't remember. I've been out of the city for a while. Where is, where uh, is that? Uh, yeah. I'm okay, sorry, I'm messing up the flow. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just... Go ahead, go ahead. I'll be okay. all right. And this is the second one. And it's probably even more abstract than the first one. <laughs> but again, uh, as as you alluded to, backlit. Um, uh, and here's the here's the title I gave it. Are you ready for this? Oh boy. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. <laughs> oh no. Are you sure are you sure he's eating a wing? He's eating a wing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't had dinner yet. I'm getting hungry. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. 
Was it extra crispy or barbecue? He was down to the bone, so I couldn't I, tell you. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you took that picture because you were kind of amazed that somebody was, was just sort of eating on Fifth Avenue. He, he's hungry, but it's, he was eating yeah. chicken. I know. It's, it's, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, I have a, as you guys, you may know, I have a thing about public eating in public. Uh, so I have a series on public eating. Uh, this is part of that uh, project, but this is one that happens to coincide with the darkness. So um, I decided to bring that on board, and here it is. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. One, one, one thing I like about you know uh, using the darkness is that, um, like you were saying, it, it 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 emphasizes the light source or the lightest part, and then you know with all the darkness around, everybody's kind of abstracted with the darkness, mm -hmm. the chicken wing pops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, so man. I, you, guys, you, guys, you guys are something else. See, because I thought I was going out on a limb when I when I went with a, <laughs> with a camera manufacturer. But you guys, you're a braver man than I can. You actually have a, is that, you have a person eating chicken representing two black, two strong. <laughs> hey, that, that, just that's cool. purely coincidental. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I got, man. That's it for me. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're done for for today. Well, Mark, I wanted to ask you a quick question about sure. uh, Nikon. Yeah. So, was the homage to a degree? Uh, because you said that the, the issues with Nikon and the production, and then you said Fujifilm and not being able to. Is there sort of a darkness in the demise? Are you talking about the demise? Yeah, actually, a, yeah. There, okay. There's also, yeah, there's also like the dark, there's the darkness of this, of this industry, you know, that for a long time was pretty much dominated by Japanese manufacturing, you know, and whether one is a in fan of that or not, the idea that one nation really kind of symbolized a, a certain level of professional photography, a certain type of photography, I, I really, you know, I was in awe of it. I mean, let's face it, there was a time when everybody wanted, you know, a Nikon camera or a Nikon camera. And I think it's safe to say that, you know, each of us at least bought one. Who knows how many, you know, everyone individually bought. But that was like the goal. Uh -huh. was to get a Nikon. I mean, some people wanted to get Leicas and some people wanted to get Hasselblads, but they were uh -huh. outliers. I mean, you know, and they need none of neither of the those were really on the on the horizon. But a Nikon camera was the pro camera that was accessible. Okay. You know? yeah. And Canon had not become this juggernaut with the white telephoto lenses representing sports photography. Uh, uh -huh. you know, because that didn't happen until the 90s. So okay. it was really, it was really the Nikon. It was like you bought whatever you bought, whether it was a Pentax or maybe a Canica or something, or a Minolta. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, you, everyone kind of knew what Nikon camera they wanted, whether it was an FM or an FE or maybe an F or some iteration of the F, maybe an F1, uh, F, excuse me, an F, an F2, yeah. an F3. You know Greg, Greg, Greg wants to interject. Yeah, yeah, okay. just, just not, not to tell my age or anything, but um, there was a time when uh, – Nikon's lenses looked like the Canon look now. They had this; they were silver and black, uh -huh. you know. But I mean, they've gone all black. But you know, the Canons today's Canon kind of looked like yesterday's Nikon telephoto. So yeah, I'm just saying, I, I don't know why I threw that in. Well, I, I believe it. I mean, you know, I think people. I think in design, there are a lot of ideas that manufacturers have that they take from other, you know, other designers, other manufacturers earlier. Really. I don't. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But it's okay. like there's sort of a darkness in the idea that you know that industry is folding for them, and, okay. it, and it's weird. Not folding, but it's diminishing a little bit. And then Olympus went out of business, and then the Olympics, and there's nobody in the stands, and there's so much controversy about whether they even should have them. You know, you just kind of look and go, "Wow, you know, it's sad." Yeah. You know? Yeah. I hear you. Okay, well, we got it's kind of like the brownie. Minute, though, so great. Half a minute. I was just going to say because when the brownie came out, uh, you know, a lot of commercial studios collapsed because everybody had uh, could afford a camera. You know, photography wasn't to the elite anymore. You know, right. so now you know everybody's got a cell phone. I went right. to an event and I was uh, I think I sold two pictures. 
<laughs> at an event yeah, where right. most people would be like, yeah, in my picture too, you know. And, I believe uh, it. I believe it. I believe it. Well, you know, even with the, but here's the thing, even with the, even with all the cameras that are available, including cell phone iterations of cameras, you know, people are really, people in the, the tech world or the photo technology world are very excited about the chrome bodied uh, Nikon retro styled Z camera. And I realized it's because all these years, these, you know, these big black cameras were too intimidating for people. I mean, you know, they, they look, you look like a professional, you, you know, you show up at a, a, at a family gathering with a, you know, with that, it, it looks like overkill, you know? Camera. Um, like, so it, you it's good. It's gonna be fancy camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and not that it is overkill, it's just that people get a little antsy about it. So uh, I think with their Z camera, they'll probably rebuild a little bit of their brand. And, you know, they look just like an FM, and people are loving it. And I'm, I'm happy to see that. But I just wanted to give them some props because right now, you know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm working with the other brand primarily. And I just wanted to kind of say, because I don't, I don't mention them. You know, the, the whole photography industry is in a flux now with these cam. I mean, the cell cameras are doing amazing things. I mean, like, no thought time lapse, you know, no thought uh, slow motion, you know, and, and, it, and they're shooting it at 1080p. So you can pull a fairly dis decent uh, print from it because it's a yep. high def image, you know. So the stuff that they're doing, and, it, and it's going to do nothing but get better. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll, All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this in because we're going to try to keep this one really short, right? Yeah. Unless Ken's got something to add. Nope. Go ahead. Nope. All right. Well, we have been the three Black Pratt grads. We and, still are. And we, 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 still, we have been and we still are and we will continue to be. And I am with uh, Kenneth Nelson and Greg Cleghorn. I'm Mark Skinner. And we've been talking about too black, too proud. Oh, well, excuse me. Too black, too strong. Too strong. There you go. Not too, too black, too strong uh, in, in terms of photography. So there you go. That's it. Have a good night.